Welcome. Um, my name is Kirk. I do this coaching um, for my living. I, um, I help people with connecting to their deeper selves, okay? Just in case you all don't know. Very simple. Straight to the point. So how do you break soul ties? How do you break soul ties? Now, a lot of us are struggling with old relationships. I'm not going to stay long because my kids are about to come from school in a few minutes. Um, a lot of us are struggling with these relationships or with these broken hearts or with these broken people or... We are broken, we feel broken, we feel tired, and we don't know how to get out of these damn soul commitments. I'm telling you straight up, it is not what you think, right? It is not what you think. Soul ties are really your energy and their energy having this interaction, and they are still connected based on your response to how you are, or how you reacted to when you met them, when you slept with them, when you sleep with them. When you touch them, when they touch you, based on your emotions, your feelings, and your experience, the stronger your emotions and if, and the reactions, the stronger the bond, the entanglement. Okay, that's pretty much a quantum entanglement. When two energies come together, and you respond, you see, like like for instance, right? Let's go. Let's go straight to the point. Let's 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 get simple. Let's get simple. When you meet somebody, right? Let's say you meet somebody and you you slept with them, right? And it wasn't that good. And you didn't really like them that much. And the reaction wasn't that great, which we all had. We all have experienced this before. You meet somebody, the experience ain't that damn good. There's no soul tie, right? There's nothing. Tomorrow you wake up, you're good. Next day you wake up, you're perfectly fine. You have no attachments. You don't want them anymore. You don't care. You don't care what to do with their lives. You don't care. You want to move on, right? Nothing happens. However, the next day you meet somebody, not the next day, um, literally. The next day you meet somebody, you spoke to them for a while, you conversed for a while, and bam, you had that interaction. When you had the interaction, your soul left you because you experienced this climax, right? You had this experience of this reaction, and you're like, oh my God, your toes begin to crawl, your fingernails came off, your back curved, and you, your, your reaction was always out of this world. Based on how you respond, Based on how your body responds and how your mind responds, that forms an entanglement. The deeper entanglement. Okay? So far. Simple, right? Simple so far, right? That form is complete bond. The longer you stay with them is the longer you realize that they begin to influence how you feel. They begin to influence what you think. They begin to influence what you do. Because now, since you are two joint energies, because of your reaction of your um, emotions of your feelings since you are joined by the same wavelength, right? The same wave joins you. Now you call it a soul tie. And to get to break this soul tie, it is very difficult, but yet so simple because you are literally connected as one. The entanglement is real. So to break this soul tie, it is hell. Hey, bald beauty, how are we doing? It is hell to break. Now, there's a law that's called the law of psychometrics influence. Okay? The law of psychometric influence. It states that when two objects come together, based on the initial response, no matter how much time has passed, and no matter how much distance is set between, the one will influence the other. One will always have influence on the other. If I wear this necklace, if I wear this necklace every day, right? My beads, my mother beads, every day. My feelings are in it. My energy is in it. It's transferred to it. I feel it. This is what I wear. Just like your grandmother gave, you know, wear a diamond ring or a, or, or, or a gold chain for, for, that, for that many years. If I give you this necklace, this necklace, I already have my energy in it. So therefore, when I put it around your neck, it will influence your behavior. It will influence your mood. It will influence how you feel. It will influence how you think because I am in this, right? So that's basically the law of psychometric influence. It, my energy begins to influence yours. So that's most like a soul tie, the law of psychometric influence. Understand this, when you sleep with somebody and the reaction is powerful because you know that those people who you slept with that wasn't that great, you don't really care. You're not influenced by them. You don't care. You don't care what they do. You don't care what they think. You don't care. You, have, you don't feel anything. 
They call you and text you and they say, hey, can you come over? You're like, nope, I ain't coming. I don't even like you. Leave me alone. Nothing. But the ones that you reacted the strongest to have the most power over you and how they influence you. How do you break this soul tie? Now, many of us has a, have all this karma. Karma, if you think about karma, we, we, we not, not many of us, we are all, when we were born, our parents, as we were pushed out of the womb of, the, of your mother, whatever, you know, I tell my daughter that she was pushed out of some place where I don't want to explain. So wherever you was pushed out, as you, as, as, as your mom pushed you out, your ancestral DNA and the karma from your generations to pass is passed through your mother's womb down to you. So you have all this karma that you have to break as you live now, right? All this karma that you have to break. And the way to break karma is to be still. Now, let me explain this to soul ties. Soul ties is a, is, is a type of connection that you have with somebody, a bond that you have with another energy based on your response. Now, if you think about him or her, you want to call them. If they walk away, you think about them. If they leave you, you, you feel all this depression, angry. You feel all these insecurities. If they tell you that they don't like you anymore, you this and you that. So whatever they do, they move you, right? Because if they think about you, you will call them. If you think about them, they're wondering why you on my mind. So it's a strong bond. Understand that is something like karma. It is karma. But it's a whole different version. Now, this thing is in your body, is in your mind, is in your spirit, is in your sexual experiences. Is they control how you think and feel. Now, here's the deal. What's up, Rhonda? How are you doing, man? Thank you. Now, here's the deal. Hey, Miss Howard. Here's the deal. To break this soul tie, it is very simple, but yet it takes discipline and practice. Some of you all here ain't got no discipline at all. You got no discipline. When it feels, when you feel... You are falling victim to your feeling. So many of you don't have discipline. The reason why you will never beat this is because you have no discipline. This takes discipline. Now, if you want to understand how to break the soul tie, that connection, that bond, that response to that person. Because remember, soul tie is kind of like trauma. Right? See, like when 28 years ago, when that thing happened to you, and you have that strong reaction, and the strong feeling... And that strong emotion, now when you have the emotion, the karma is back. I mean, not karma, the trauma is experienced now. And when you have this feeling, the trauma comes back. And when you have this thought, the feeling comes and the trauma comes. So you are connecting based on your emotion, based on the response. If you use the same way how you responded with them, the trauma is here still. Understand that the trauma is not real. It happened 28 years ago. It's not true, but it, it, lives, in your, it lives in your memory through your emotions, okay, through your response. That's what I try. So soul tie is the same thing. Now, how do you get over? How do you get over this soul tie? Sometimes, I ain't gonna lie, you with someone and everything is good. Life is good. Your response to them is very beautiful. You want them, they want you. You want them, they want you. And everything is good. And your sexual experiences is high, your emotions is high, and then bam, they leave. They're done with you, they're over. Now, understand this, your body have memory. Your body retain all information. Your body ret um, re retain all information. Understand this, it's what the body does. The body's gonna still crave them. Have you, you're gonna realize that even, even after they left you, when you were good, you never dreamt about them. Do you realize this? When you was in a relationship with your partner, you never dreamt about them. Right or wrong? You never had dreams about them. Dreams don't come to you. There's nothing there. Until they leave and when they break up with you, all of a sudden, you start having these dreams. You want and you think, oh my God, I must miss them. Oh my God, I want them back. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Right? The dreams begin to come after the breakup. Why? Why do you only dream of people when they leave you? That's because sometimes when you're with somebody, and everything is good, there's no need to dream about them. The mind is perfectly fine. The mind is clear. The mind is doing stuff. The mind is not resisting. The mind is not resisting. It's not resisting. It's not fighting. It's not resisting. Now, when you leave somebody or when somebody leaves you, the mind begins to resist. Now, understand this. Soul tie plays a big role in this. If I think about you, if we broke up, if I think about you for so hard and so long, I begin to appear in your dream. 
Why? Because while you are asleep, you are very still. Your, sub, your conscious mind has shut off and only your subconscious mind begins to be active. In that state of mind, you are very vulnerable. You, are, you, you become very vulnerable when you are asleep. That's why people do all this magic to you when you're sleeping. Hey, Kay, when you're sleeping is when people attack you. I had an African lady attack me just the other day in my dream. In my sleep, I had to block her on all platform. This stuff is serious, y'all. This stuff is serious. People know how to use energy when you are asleep. So listen, if I think about you while you are asleep, I'm sending you a vibration, okay? Now, sometimes they don't know what they're doing. Don't, no, don't get it twisted. They don't know what they're doing. But if I put you on my mind when you are asleep, I penetrate your mind. You begin to see me in your dreams. To break this soul tie, what you must do when you feel like you're missing them, when you feel horny for them, when you feel like you want them, when you feel like you miss them, when you feel like you desire them, when you feel like you need them, when you feel, when you feel, and when you feel, the only thing that you should do is be still. Is be still. And you feel it again, be still. And you feel it again, you be still. And you feel like calling, you be still. And you feel like texting, you be still. And you feel like being next to them, you be still. You have to. That's, why, that's how you burn your karma off. It's being still. That's why God said, be still and know. And I know. I know. See, when they come to your mind, if you fight them, you're not being still. If you fight the idea, you're not being still. If you resist them, you're not being still. If you resist the idea, you're not being still. If you resist the feeling, you're not being still. If... If you resist, you're not being still. You are putting more energy. Understand? To resist is to put more energy into the idea or thought. Okay? Check this out. To resist something is to add more energy into that. Therefore, it expands. What you must do when they come to your mind, when they come to your feeling, when they come to your emotions, you be still. Understand? It is perfectly fine to be in love with somebody that you once were. Were with. It's perfectly fine to love that person still. It is perfectly fine to remember that person. It is perfectly fine for you, your body, to crave that person. It is perfectly fine. It is perfectly fine. If you fight it, it expands. If you fight this experience, it gets bigger. And when it gets bigger, it causes anxiety, don't it? It causes anxiety, it causes depression, it causes panic attacks, it causes you can't, I can't live, I can't live, I don't know what to do, I can't, because you are trying to not think about the duck. Don't think about the duck. Don't think about it. See what happens. Don't think about it. Resist it. The duck gets bigger. The duck happens in every, you begin to see the duck in your dreams, on the TV, every station you go to, there's an Aflac, right? You start to hear Aflac everywhere you go. Because your mind, when you try to fight it, the mind projects it bigger. To break soul ties, okay? To break soul ties, you don't, comp uh, you don't compartmentalize it. What you do is, it's okay to miss people. It's, the body must get, the body is just remembering. Remember, the body does not know that you don't like this person anymore. The body does not know that you hate this person. The body does not know. The body does not know how you feel about it. The body is just wants what it wants. It's like when you're hungry. You want what you want. You can't get mad because you're hungry. Right? You can't get mad. You can't get upset. You, 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 know, you can't get miserable. You just let the body do what it do. Or do what it does. You let the mind do what it do. The mind go on shit. Don't it? The mind travels in random places where you can't stand. But if you have a feeling, if you give the mind a feeling, the mind stays there. If you give the mind no response, the mind moves on. Understand this. If you give the mind or your thought a response, it stays. You entertain your thoughts. If you allow the mind to travel in peace like, it's, like it does, like it's supposed to do, it travels the entire world. That's what the mind does. That's what the mind does. Allow the mind to travel back and forth, front and back. Allow the mind to travel up and down and just be still. How do you break soul ties? You break soul ties by understanding that you, you don't have to rush anybody out of your mind. You ain't have to rush anybody out of your memory. You ain't got to force nobody out of this body. You ain't got to force nothing. It does it on its own. If they come to your mind and you want to text, just don't text. 
Just, it's okay. I want to text. You know, no matter, see, somebody said, no matter how you feel, no matter how you feel, you have the power to not do anything. No matter how you feel, you have the power in your actions. You still have the power to do what you have to do or do what you want to do. No matter how you feel, nothing has to change. I want you to understand how do you break soul ties. I know that you all talk about it was so hard. It was so difficult. It's impossible. It's this. You'll be okay with everything. How do you break soul ties? When the experience comes, you relax your body. One of the best things to do is when you miss this person, understand if you have a tense response. So some of you all, when they, when they come to your mind, you tense up, right? When they come to your mind, you tense up. If you tense up, you receive that energy and it stays with you. See, that's why some of you all struggle for so many years with the same issue because you are tense. You walk around, your butt cheeks clenched together, your shoulders are high, you just tense. You are keeping all that negative vibration in. When you are tense, understand, nothing that's good comes in because you block it. You repel the good stuff and you suck in the bad stuff because that's what tension does. Tension um, keeps or, re or keeps the energy inside and it begins to cause pain and, and suffering and, and a whole bunch of anxiety because you keep it in. When you have the thought... When you have the thought of someone, somebody that you can't stand, right? When somebody comes to your mind or your memory or you miss them, relax. Just relax. It's okay. It's, well, like, what do you all think? When somebody touches you, you can't get rid of that touch. That touch is in bed. That touch is all in your skin. That touch went through your soul. And your, that touch, see, the body remains, the body keeps everything. The body holds everything in. The body remembers everything. The body keeps score. The mind remembers too, but the body remembers everything. So when the body remembers the feeling of the person, when the body remembers the feeling or the scent, have you ever smelled the scent? And when you smell the scent, that person came to your mind. It's like, oh my God. You, smell, you start smelling your ex-girlfriend, your ex-boyfriend, because the body remembers, don't it? You ever had somebody touch you the same way as somebody did? You're like, oh shoot. The body remembers. You can't get it out. Don't force it. Don't try to get it out. Because if you try to get it out, you're going to suffer, don't you? Some of you all are suffering right now. Some of you all are suffering because you can't get them out of your mind. You can't, you can't, you can't. And you've been trying. You, listen, you've been trying so hard. You've been trying your best to remove them from your heart, from your mind. But the more you try to remove them is the more you can't sleep. I can't sleep, babe. You can't sleep. You can't think. You can't eat. Because you are focused on them. You are expanding them. Let things, let the feeling come. And it takes a while. It doesn't take the same day. You do it every day. That's why it takes discipline. You want to break that soul tie? Stop responding. Give the mind and the body a reason to stop bringing that attraction. You have to stop responding to it. If you respond, the mind does not know what, how you are. Whether you hate something. Understand this right, okay? Let's, let's understand this. Let's get this straight. Whether you hate something or whether you love something, it expands. Do you know this? Because hate is energy pushed out. Love is energy pushed out. If you send energy to something, whether hate, anger, or love, it expands the same. See, you all think, you all, <laughs> see, this is the biggest problem. You think, because you hate them, they go away. No, they grow even more. When you love them, they grow even more. So what if you just have no response? What if you have no response? And it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a while. It's going to take a while. Some of you all want to just be done. How do I stop loving him? You don't have to stop loving nobody. Why do you want to stop loving people? Why do you want, why must you want, why must you want to stop loving me? Why? Why am I doing to you? Well, I don't want to love you. Why not? What does loving me do? Loving me, do no loving me does nothing wrong to you. Wanting me does. Expect, you know, expectations of me does. Loving me is, is, is a natural thing. Expecting me to do something or to be something, that's where we struggle. Loving people is not an issue. So when you break up with somebody, loving them is not the issue. It's your expectations because you are hurt. And when you become hurt, you, ex you want a person to suffer. 
You want them to suffer? You want them to feel the pain? Loving me ain't got crap to do with your pain. Expecting me to be this man or this woman is the problem. Wanting me to be what I am not is the problem. Wanting me to give you what you are giving me is the problem. But loving me, it is, it's like the sunset. You love the sunset, but does it hurt you? No, you just love it. You love the roses. Does it hurt you? No. What do you want back? Nothing. So therefore, the love is pure. But for me, you want me to give you what I'm giving? No, it's not. I'm not going to give you what you're giving me because sometimes I don't have that. Listen, how do you break these soul ties? Learn to be okay in not responding. How do you build, how do you break trauma bonds? Learn to stop reacting, people. You break them the same way. You stop reacting. Some of you all want to react because you have no control. You want to react because you don't know any better. You want to react because that's all you know. Stop reacting. You can, you have a choice in how you react, people. You really have a choice. Some of you all think that, so if somebody say this, you got to do this. If somebody, that's trauma responding. That's not even you. You're not even present. You are completely sleeping. But I'm telling you, man, when you love somebody and you have the, when you have the strong attachment to somebody from, especially from a sexual experience, man, that thing is deep, ain't it? That thing is strong. When you have this experience based on a sexual, because sex is one of the strongest bond, ain't it? When you join that energy together, understand, we don't know, understand what, what is happening. When our, when our feelings are in tune with that person, what happens? You join to be a one. Number one. Number two, every time he thrusts, every time he thrusts, every time he thrusts, you understand, a thrust is an affirmation. I can, I can, I can, I will. But it's based on how he feels inside. If he hates you, if he feels this, if he's angry, if he's this, I'm angry. I, every thrust, I'm affirming how I feel. Ah. Uh. And so, hey, if you sleep with somebody that don't like you, that's why you hate, that's why you hate yourself afterwards. Why do you feel like you hate, why do you think that you hate yourself so much afterwards? Because somebody is affirming how they feel about you and pushing it in you every day, six minutes, seven minutes. That is suffering. Your body after the climax, your body feels just, it just drops, don't it? You can't stand it. Because it's how they really feel. And you, you think that you are doing it. You think that you are doing it because you love them. They love you. No. Your body keeps score and your body knows the truth. Your body will know exactly the truth. We have to be aware of what our bodies are telling us. You have to be aware. Energy transfer is real. So that when somebody loves you and want the best for you, do you know when each thrust it's, it's inspiration. Each thrust is love. Each, that's why when you finish, whether you climax or not, it's a beautiful experience. Because they just send you that more love. See, sex adds to the connection. But I'm telling you, this is why you must, ex you, you must understand. You must know how somebody feels about you before you have them penetrate. Females are the same way too. Because the energy that you give to a woman, she multiplies it. Don't she? Whatever you give to a woman, she multiplies it. Brothers, you got, you got to be careful. Because whatever you give to her, she takes it and she multiplies it. That's why she becomes the demon from hell. Because now she can't leave. She's cutting your tires. She's cutting your rims. You can't do that. Because whatever you give her, and listen, I'm, I'm just saying, don't get mad at me for saying it. Whatever you give to the woman, she multiplies because that's what she does. She gives birth. She is the feminine. She gives the idea. She takes the idea. And she is like the subconscious and the conscious mind. The man and the woman, same thing. Whatever the man gives her, whatever your conscious mind gives your subconscious mind, your subconscious mind must create a reality. It must give birth to your conscious mind, to your conscious thoughts. So understand this, whatever you, see, whatever you give to that woman, she multiplies it. But sometimes you can't stand her because you got to question, what are you giving to that woman? You got to be careful. You, this is why you got to be careful about who you are laying with. You know what I mean? I'm telling you, the reason why it is so hard 
Thank you, Rebecca. The reason why it's so hard to break these soul ties is because you have no control. It's because you have no discipline. And it's because you always have to react. Because you're afraid. Because you're angry. And because you just feel terrible. Allow your bad, allow yourself to miss people. Listen, I could miss you, but I don't have to do anything about it. It's okay. I can miss you. What's up, Maxwell? I can miss you and not do anything about it. I could want to pick up the phone and call you, but I don't have to. I could want to text you, but as you get used to that, you begin to gain control of yourself, right? Because every time you, every time you go back over and sleep with them, see, that's what, see that's, what, that's what people do. You have this feeling and you want to go back and sleep with them. You want to go back and give them some. You want to go back and do it again. And every time you do it, you start over. That you start over. The reaction comes, you start over. Hey, Austin, you start over again. Stop starting over. Start now. People, you must have discipline. You can't break a soul tie. There's a second way to break a soul tie. You all want to know? A second way. This might take a little bit shorter. Do you all, you all want to know? I can tell you this in two minutes, but you all got to do it. And you all probably won't believe me because it's very simple. You all want to know? I can tell you real quick. Hey, Lisa. Energy is motion. We need to learn to stop. Yeah, facts. Listen. When you leave somebody, when you break up from somebody, right? A lot of you all, you keep, thank you, um, debauchery. You want to keep messages. <laughs> he said, hey, hey, I am worthy. He said, tell us, huh? <laughs> you all want to get somebody out of your life. Some of you all got people in your life that you can't let go, huh? They, they, they are, they are, they are punished. They are torturing you, ain't they? They torture in the hell out of you because you can't stop. They're in your dreams. They're in your sleep. They're in your body. They can call you back. They can text you and say, hey. And you're like, oh my God, your nipples start getting hard. I don't know how I can say these things. I don't want to say the crazy things on here because I don't want to get flagged. I'm on four different platforms. I'm on TikTok. I'm on IG. I'm on Insta Facebook. And I'm on YouTube live at the same time. And I don't know the rules of this. But, you, you know, you, you know, somebody, you know, you have this person in your life, whether men or... Because, you know, men... You know, men experience this too. Men, sometimes, boy, we, I ain't gonna lie, I had to do this once. I had this lady who I was with. <laughs> listen, hey, listen, I had this lady who I was with. And um, I was, <laughs> I was terrible, man. I was all in there. I was all, I was like a puppy, man. She got me torn up. You hear me? You know what I had to do? <laughs> this is years and years ago. I had to leave the whole damn country. I had to go to Asia and live there for a while. You hear me? I had to go. I had to move for a year to get out my system. You all think I'm so you all. I know you all don't think that I know what I'm talking about because I'm a man. I know you all think I don't understand. I had to get her out of my system. Listen, I'm telling you, I had to move to Asia from the U.S. to Asia just to get her out because I couldn't stay away. You hear me? I couldn't. St I just couldn't stay away. So I had to leave the country. I'm like, hey, listen, I'm going. I had to go. You all think that this is not this is serious, man? Listen, but when you know that something ain't gonna end right, you gotta do what you gotta do. You have to move. You. I don't care what it costs. I don't care what's the cost. You gotta do what you gotta do. You can't keep going over talking about well, let's be friends. No, you don't want to be friends. Oh, you, you from Asia? It's not, it's not about love. I knew it wasn't going to end right. I knew it wasn't going anywhere. But if I stay, it was us being hurt continuously. I knew it wasn't based on a feeling. I must base my decision with a lack of emotion. I must, I must decide what to do. So I moved instead. I wanted to stay. I wanted to stay. But I knew if I stayed, I, my spirit was messed up. I began to cuss. I was angry. I was frustrated. I always wanted to be around her, but I knew every time I come around her, it was like the movie. But what's the movie with um with with Will Smith when he was that hero? What's what's the movie again? That when he was the hero on Hancock. Every time I come around her, man, oh my lord, my energy changed. But I couldn't stay away. Some of us are like this right now. I couldn't stay away. No matter how much my energy changed, 
that sexual experience, what she did, what I did for her, it was a, but my energy changed. So I couldn't, I got weaker. Every time I'm with you, I got weaker. Weaker in a way that I just become, I begin to lose my damn self. Lose my damn mind. So I had to leave the damn country. This is real. This ain't no joke. I wish I knew this back then, what I do now, to just be still. But I didn't, I didn't know. I didn't practice this yet. I had no idea. This is years and years ago. Listen, when you're done with somebody, you see all those messages that you keep in your phone to remind you? Those messages are sent with energy. Can you read a text message in somebody's energy and say, damn, you're really mad. You don't hear their tones. You don't hear them talk. You don't hear the message out loud, but you read it and know that person is messed up. Listen, when you read that message, understand the message is sent with a certain vibrational frequency. When you read that message, understand it affects your vibration. It affects your entire being. It affects your spirit. So when you're done with somebody, I know especially you are a woman, you are like to keep those messages there just to bring it up. When you love because you want to remember, you know, you want to remind yourself, you want to remember what he said. So that you can, no, listen, when you are done with somebody, take those messages and let it go. Delete. You understand? Delete those things because every time you read them, your body suffers, your spirit suffers, your emotional, ch- you, you become, ugh, you just, you, you, ha- you lose control because the energy hits you again and it hits you again. And then it keeps you bonded to that person. It keeps you bonded to that person. Let it go. Block and delete. Next thing, pictures. Be careful. Pictures, you got to be careful. Them pictures. Uh, Pictures speak a thousand words. Every time you look at them pictures, the memory sets in. The feeling sets in. The anger, resentment sets in. Understand, when you have those pictures, especially if you don't got no kids, I ain't saying to delete any, everything. I'm saying to compartmentalize your phone somewhere where you will never see them pictures again. Because the truth is, until you delete them pictures, some of you all ain't done yet. Some of you all can't delete pictures because you really ain't done. You find reasons to keep those pictures, ain't it? Don't you all? You find reasons to keep those pictures because in a way you're not done. You gotta be bold. To break these soul ties, you gotta be bold. You, you, you gotta be bold. But I will tell you this, keep one picture. And I'm going to tell you exactly what to do with it. Keep one picture where the person's eyes are showing. I'm going to tell you exactly what, what to do with it. Keep one picture, just one picture, with the person's eyes showing. I'm going to tell you what to do. I'm going to take all them pictures and do what you must do. Number three, all that stuff that carries their scent, all them clothes that they left in your house, that bed sheets and bed... You don't need to wash them things. Get that scent out. Remember, energies is carried by those sensory, right? Your eyesight, your smell, your hair. You know, you know what people do? You, know, you, want, you want to know a trick that people do? Let me tell you a trick that people do that you don't know that you're doing. Let me tell you a trick that you don't understand. That you do all the time, but you don't understand the kind of effect that you have on that person. You want a person to remember you? Send them a song. I know, you, I know women do that. You want a person to remember you, send them a popular song. Not a song that they never hear before or that don't play on, on the regular mainstream because <clears throat> they might never hear it again. You want somebody to remember you, send them a song that plays all the time. Hey, I was thinking about this song and, I, I, and here you go, I sent it to you. Listen to the song and watch what happens. Every time when, a, and I ain't telling you all this to do anything crazy. I'm telling you all this because the song is energy, the, the motives, the feelings, the frequency, it carries a vibration. They remember. When they remember, you come to their mind. Damn it. Every time. The song comes on and you start to cry. <laughs> Especially them old schools, you know, those 90s R&B. Especially when them, you know, when them Brack My Night comes on. Oh, shoot. One... You're like a dream come true to just want to be with. The sun comes on and you lose it, don't you? You don't know what to do with your life. But that's just mean. Don't, don't do it. You know what I mean? I need a bigger. <laughs> hey, but don't do it. So, again, delete those text messages. Delete those pictures. Burn them jokers. 
delete those. Take them things that you see that you see that you have his t-shirt or your heart t-shirt that you have the smell on. Things a man being doing to me something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll they be doing it now. Take them things and wash them. Okay? And the last thing that I will tell you is this right here. So we already talked about don't don't react and don't try to force the feeling out. Maintain the flow. Keep your body relaxed. The more you can keep your body relaxed, the more you can keep one last cry, right? The more you can keep your body relaxed is the better it passes. If you tense up every time you think about them, the feeling stays. If you relax your body and just breathe it out, the feeling passes. It passes every single time. One of the things that you have to do is send them love. Send them love because love frees you. Hate binds you. See, love don't say I want you. Love says I want me to be free. So love is not always, I need, I want you back. Love is like, you know what? I forgive you. Send them love. But when you begin to send them love, the mind stops resisting them. See, if you can stop resisting people, they will leave. Have you ever hate somebody? Have you ever, have you ever hate just, oh, have somebody ever create this, this experience in you that every time you see them, you suffer? Every time you see them, you want to you, you wanna fight? Every time you see them, your blood crawl. Every time you see them, your whole mind just F you up. Every time you see them, you just shut down. You, you feel sick. Have you ever experienced that? You are suffering because you're sending them hate. When you begin, because you are resisting them. When you send them love, I promise you. If you send somebody love, you don't have to resist them anymore. You don't have to not want. And the more you hold on to that vibration, that anger, that pain, that connection... You see them everywhere you go, don't you? Everywhere you go, you see them. Everywhere you go, they're, they're, they're right there. Everywhere, they everywhere, everywhere you go, they're right next to you. You see them, you're like, oh, shoot. Because the energy connects you to them. So you are bonding yourself based on the hate, the emotions, your feelings. You bond yourself to that energy. Man, understand, this is how it's called. You bond yourself to that energy. Bam! So when they move, you move. Just like that. Because in all this life, you have to face what you're afraid of. Don't you? Life says, life says that I must face what I fear the most to get over it. So life gives you opportunity. Life will give you opportunity so you can face it. It doesn't care about what you want or what you don't want. It doesn't care. If you experience fear, that dog that you, that dog that you afraid of the most, that dog that you have your neighbor... That you hate the most, and you're afraid the most, and you're scared of the most, you would always see that dog, don't you? That dog always looking at you, don't you? That dog always staring at you. You pass by, he lifts his head up. <laughs> have, you, have, you, have, you, have you ever seen the dog lift his head up like this? Just looking at you? And you scared to death. You, 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 you mad. <laughs> you mad because the dog is just staring at you. The dog ain't doing nothing. But the dog can sense your energy. The dog can sense your energy. So if you give the dog love, the dog relaxes. If you give the dog hate, the dog begins to respond. The, the dog begins to resist. And that's what you are doing. You are resisting. Understand. Stop resisting. You got to stop resisting. Stop resisting. So let's let you all get, you all get what I'm saying, right? Simple, right? Pretty simple, right? Yeah, the, the dog's been in fear. <laughs> that's right, champion. So we good so far? I got one last thing. And then I'm done. Because my kids are about to walk in this house. Okay. I want you to take a picture of that person. I probably shouldn't tell you all this. Because I don't want you all to use this. If you're going to do it right now, don't use your own picture. Because you might start getting sick. I want you to, to take that person's picture. After I think after I do this video, I'm going to delete it. I don't want this to be saved on my Facebook platform. Because I don't want this to be out there. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to delete it from my Facebook Oh, from a, from my YouTube channel. Hey, Lori. Take the picture. Find the picture on your phone. Look at their eyes. Their eyes tell a lot. Their eyes are windows to their souls. Okay? I want you to take that picture. I want you to look at the picture. Look in their eyes. Seriously. As you look in their eyes, you have to look past their eyes. Now, look Use the eyes to get to their soul, okay? Their spirit. And as you look through their eyes, I want you to be stern. 
I want you to speak. And as you speak to their spirit, because the picture represents their spirit. You know who See, when you are connected to somebody, you can speak to them. Do you, do you know that? That's how they can end up in your dreams. That's how you can know when they are sick. That's when you can know when they are happy. That's when you can know how they are feeling because you are connected. You can speak to them. You can speak to their spirit. Understand that it's very simple. It's not voodoo. It is not black magic. It's just how we are built. It's called connection. You can know when your kids are sick. You can know when something happened to your kid from a hundred miles away. You can tell because you're, you are connected. You can speak to your people. That's because you are connected. I want you to look at that picture and look in their eyes. And as you look in their eyes, I want you to speak. I want you to speak sternly. You are no longer welcome in my spirit. You got to speak. I want you to speak to that person. <laughs> I don't want to say too much. If you're going to do it, don't look. I've been sexually intertwined as a soul. This is why it's taught to have sex. Facts. Exactly. I want you to speak to their spirit. You are no longer welcome in my spirit. You have no place in my body, in my mind. Speak. Use your own words. Don't use mine. Don't use my words. But begin to speak. When you are finished speaking, understand, don't just look at their eyes. Look past their eyes as you do this. Connect to their spirit with your spirit. And you have to be stirred. Okay? Okay? And as you do that release, you're going to feel that feeling, those emotions begin to feel a little off. You're going to feel emotional. You're going to feel those ties begin to break. You're going to feel that energy begin to... You might start to panic. You might stop because sometimes you don't, want, you don't really want them to go. You say you do, but you really don't want them to go. You, you, because you, you, you still have hope. You don't, want, you don't want them to get... You, know, you don't want them to be removed. Because you still want what if... After you do this now, you have to be disciplined. You speak to their spirit. After you speak to their spirit about five minutes and you feel those feelings, you are no longer welcome with me. I, not resist, what's that what's the word? I rebuke you. I rebuke you from my spirit. You are no longer welcome here. You are no longer, and as you speak, when you are done, speak to your own spirit. Use your voice. Use your grown-up voice. Speak to your spirit. Some of you all be too nice and soft. That's why your spirit don't take you seriously. You have to command your spirit. You have to tell your spirit, every time you see this person, every time you feel it, reject him. Reject her. You have to speak to your spirit. And as you begin to speak to your spirit, it begins to release. I command you to release. You're going to speak to your own spirit. This is, your, this, this is you that you're speaking to. The thoughts ain't strong enough. Your thoughts ain't strong enough. You have to speak. You have to allow you, yourself to hear yourself say the word. And as your spirit hears you say the word, it begins to release it. Now as you do that, it takes discipline. Good, Bridget. It takes discipline. Now, that tie is broken. You're no longer bonded. Just because you remember, not, so after you do this, doesn't mean that your memory disappears. Your memory does not disappear. Your memory does not disappear. I know some of you all want to take and remove all, I get inboxes all the time. How do I forget someone? Why the hell do you want to forget someone? You want them to be perfect strangers again? Perfect strangers? I don't, who, who are you? No, that doesn't help. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. How do I forget somebody so I can move on? You don't have to forget anybody to move on. Moving on is your choice. Matter of fact, moving on is natural. How you can't move on? It's, I don't know how you can't move on. You don't have nobody. Nobody is yours. Hey, Flo, that's right. So understand this. The thought about forgetting somebody to move on, it is ridiculous. 
It is very immature. It is very un unconscious, unaware. It's a bunch of crap. You don't, forget, you don't forget people to move on. You move on because you have discipline. And after a while, when your body and your mind realizes that she or he has no hold on you, the body releases. See, what, the thing about the mind is this. The thing about the mind that you all don't understand is this. If you have a thought and you give that thought energy, that thought stays. If you tell, if you give that thought feelings, anger, love, happiness, hate, peace, whatever you give, if you give it energy, the thought stays. The mind does not know which one you like better. Understand, if you, if you plant, if you plant a poison and a carrot, a poison plant and a carrot in the same earth, it grows at the same rate. Yes, Chantel. If you, pl if you plant, if you plant a poison plant and a carrot at the same, in the same earth, it grows at the same rate. The earth is not saying, oh, that's poison. I don't want to grow this. I'll grow the carrot instead. No, both grow. So if you try to resist your thoughts, if you react to your thoughts, whether we hate or love, it grows. It still grows. If you want to get rid of somebody, stop reacting. Stop with the, all this extra dramatics. Stop. Grow up and stop. You don't always have to react. Stop being childish. Stop being immature. Stop being ridiculous. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. Because you are sending too much energy, you are giving them energy. And as you give them more energy, they expand more and more. And next thing that you know, you want to fight them more and more because you lose control more and more because you are building something because you give them all your energy. Stop doing that. You are too grown. We are too old. Only children have a thought and they can't figure it and they're going to lose control. We are not children anymore. You should be grown enough. To have something happen or to have a thought that comes or a feeling that comes and don't do anything. Just because you're angry at me doesn't mean that, that you have to cuss me out. It's childish. Just because you don't like to hear what I'm saying doesn't mean that you have to cuss me out. It's childish. It's time to grow up. Social media is making us feel like we have to respond to everything because our ego is too damn big. Learn to understand it's a progress and a process. Everything is a process. Process things. The more you respond, is the more karma you build onto it. That's why you can't leave you because you are building karma. See, karma means action. And when you do an action to another action, you build more action. You build more karma. If an action or a thought comes and you do nothing, you don't build karma. So therefore, you don't have to fight anything to kill that what you just built. Do you understand what I just said? Hey, Vaughn, do you get it? Do you get what I just said? Very simple, right? If you use action to counteract another action, you build, since those two actions has consequences, you build karma. Now, this karma will happen. Now you have to do something to fight this karma so you build more karma. And you build more karma. It just means action. Whatever you do, something must happen. That's just life. You know, whether you believe in karma or not, people, I don't believe in karma. If, if I, listen, it's, listen, karma, it just means action. I think you all think that karma is supernatural, it's a supernatural thing. It just means action. For every action, there's a consequence. For every single action, there's a reaction. It's just a part of life. It's not 